September 29th. When did the anticipation of back to school turn to the resignation of late September? To think I was once excited to get back to things like lunch duty, class transitions, and decorative kitsch. No, not Taylor. Teacher kitsch. Planning and grading leave little time for walking Hogarth. He glares at me from the living room carpet, plotting his revenge. Good boy. I pretend not to notice. Meanwhile, my weekends consist of ice cream and YouTube. During cute puppy videos, I sometimes allow myself the luxury of an ugly cry before passing out unceremoniously. October 15th. Some days my competition with the classroom clock grows dire. Other days it's all I can do to make it to the dismissal bell untarnished by the hazards of the workplace. My non-teacher friends taunt me with weekend invitations to luxuries like dinner and movies. I tell them to have fun without me. But secretly, secretly I judge them. November 6th, the days grow short, the wind grows cold, and the sun is a distant stranger. Caffeine is losing its potency. Note to self, increase coffee intake to three cups daily. Also, buy more mugs. Another faculty meeting. It's a miracle that anyone can stay awake for these things. Sundays are my only day for rest. The rest of the laundry, the rest of the dishes, the rest of the grading. November 21st, Friday. And what's more, the Friday before fall vacation. With the relief of a full night's sleep so near, I've scarcely been so pleased that, well, winter is coming. I had my students compose letters of gratitude in anticipation of the holiday recess. Imagine my surprise to discover that many were addressed to me. My favorite reads, Dear Mister, thank you for your hard work. Your class is my favorite. P.S. You seem tired. Get some rest. I think I will. For a few days at least. Then it's back to the teacher life which is, though difficult this time of year, filled with the most unexpected joy.